Four years ago, I made a guide on how to set up Zelda Classic and how to play Quest with it, but I wanted to make an updated version just because that one I felt was very lackluster. I will preface this by saying that the best way to get help is by joining the Discord server, which all you need to do is go to purezc.net. And for me, the first thing I see, I could join it right here, but otherwise you could just hover over community and click join Discord server and it automatically opened Discord for me. Anyone can join as far as I know. Go to Zelda Classic, you can just type Zelda Classic or you could go to zeldaclassic.com, either way gets you here. You could choose one of the latest releases, which like for the quest I'm developing, I would wanna choose the latest one. But for you who just wants to play a quest, go to downloads. Now, you may notice that there's a bunch of different versions here. There really isn't too much of a difference, except if the quest you're playing has a specific version. If you are playing a 2.53 quest, which I will show later how to determine what version the quest that you have is, you would probably want to choose a 2.53 version. If you're playing a really new quest that's made in 2.55, probably best to choose 2.55. Zelda Classic players are backwards compatible, or at least they are intended to be. If you're on 2.55 and you play a 2.53 quest and you run into some problems, definitely reach out to the development community in ZC to get that fixed because they do intend everything to be backwards compatible. But if you wanted to be safe, you could always get the same version. If you're playing a 2.53 quest, probably should get 2.53 if you don't want to have to deal with any potential problems. Not to say you won't, but it'll be less likely. So you see here, they have 2.53, beta 55, beta, obviously. So if you want to have a lower chance of dealing with problems, you probably don't want to choose that. Same with 2.55 if you're picking an alpha. Uh, latest nightly, that's just the absolute latest version. Uh, 2.52 is a pretty common version that a lot of the older quests, and I feel like probably the majority of quests out there are 2.52. Uh, I personally do a lot of my Let's Plays in 2.52, just out of personal preference. I could technically play every quest in 2.55, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, if you're on Linux, choose your Linux, Mac, Mac, and not actually entirely sure what LTS is. Choose which one, whichever one works for you. It's not too specific unless, again, emphasizing if you're playing a 2.x quest, you should play it on at least a 2.x player. So then once you have your Zelda Classic downloaded, in fact, here I'll even download the latest nightly just for this tutorial. That should go right here. Uh, just extract it, however you extract files. Personally, I like to right click drag and it works very fast. Now, another thing I can show you here is if you go to peerzc.net, should take you here and you'll see a whole bunch of things here uh, project quest fee whatever if you're just interested in getting quests you can go uh, hover over database go to quests and choose whatever you want uh, or you could go like even in the descriptions of my videos to find links it'll take you to the quest page let's go to uh, fun in the sun which is a quest that I played it's a fantastic quest and then all you should have to do is click download boom now you have your quest. Now note, there is a ZC for version listed here. So this is a 2.50 quest. I downloaded the latest 2.55 nightly. That should work perfectly fine. And if I run into issues, I could contact the main developers of ZC. Uh, there are ways to communicate with them through the Pure ZC Discord server, which is by far the best way to communicate with them. So don't be shy to join that. So then when you download your ZC package, you'll notice a lot of things as you would expect. Uh, but the, the main thing to note is that there is uh, an add-ons and DXGL and anti-micro. So anti-micro is a nice way to map buttons. ZC does have ways of mapping buttons, but it's kind of limited. Uh, and anti-micro is your, your classic uh, interface between a controller and a game where you can get really really refined about your button mappings. I, I use it myself, it works well. DXGL is a display interface, I suppose where you can modify how ZC displays. It, it's mainly necessary if you're playing in full screen. If you're not playing in full screen, you probably won't need that. Uh, and there's a bunch of other stuff here you, you pretty much never need to worry about. A lot of these are like internal libraries for ZC. You do not want to touch any of that stuff. Just leave it as is. Themes is if you wanted to change the theme. Eh, it's, it's up to you if you really want to. But this tutorial, I'm not going to cover that as much. I want to stick specifically to bare minimum getting things launched. So you'll, there's three main executables here you want to worry about. There's zc.exe, zlauncher, and zquest. zquest, if you're just wanting to play Zelda Classic, forget about zquest. That is the actual engine to create quests. 
So what you want is either zc.exe or zlauncher. You're probably going to want to start with zlauncher because this is kind of a, uh, yeah, I, Zelda Classic's not a virus. Don't worry about it. It's basically like a settings for Zelda, like Zelda.exe. Zelda.exe has some settings, but not many. Uh, ZQuest Launcher here has a lot more. As you can see, you can toggle full screen. You can cap your FPS. If you want to play at 400 FPS for whatever reason, where it's hard to control, go for it. Show FPS, skip logo. It just shows a little Zelda Classic logo when you first launch it. And there's a lot of other things here I don't need to really explain, just kind of explore for yourself. I personally haven't actually messed around with this too much. I uh, didn't even know that there was a DXGL thing here. I guess you probably do need to enable DXGL to get it to work. But more or less, this is all you need to worry about. Resolution uh, is something you might need to worry about. I usually have mine set for this, for the purposes of the t this tutorial and the fact I'm on a 2K monitor, I'm gonna set it for that. And uh, you're probably gonna wanna click ZC player at this point. Now your config should be saved at this point to where you won't need to launch the launcher and you should just be able to launch Zelda.exe. Well, Epsi protection, if you're familiar with Zelda and picking up Triforces, it likes to flash you really crazy like so you can turn on some kind of epilepsy protection. I'm just gonna hit no because it's not important. Uh, yes, you do wanna create a new save file. Think of it as like four, oh God, that's super loud. Think of that as like formatting a, a memory card on an old console. So yeah, this is that logo that you can skip. And not surprising why you'd want to do that. And if you just click or if you hit escape, it takes uh, you into this menu. As I mentioned, there are some settings in here. Like you could set up your gamepad directions. It's kind of limited on what actually works. Like this says use analog stick slash D-pad. For me, it only works with the analog stick. So it's pretty limited. There's some bugs in there, but it's... That's why you have anti-micro if you really want more uh, control sound. Like, I'm not gonna go through all these, th these things. A lot of the stuff is pretty intuitive. But there is one thing important to note. If you are reaching out to get help from other, from the developers, one of the first things they are going to ask you is what is your version of Zelda Classic? Because that's how you debug things. If, if someone's having a problem with a piece of software, the first thing pretty much like 99.9% .9 of developers are gonna ask, is what version of the app are you using so that they know where to start debugging. So if someone asks you what version, in this case, you would say 2.55 alpha 106, 107. I don't even know if they really need the build number. They, they typically don't from what I've seen. You just need to tell them which alpha. Uh, if they need the build, give them the build, give them the date even. Like this is just where you're gonna give, give them their, uh, that information. Now you have Zelda Classic, uh, let's get our controls set up. So like I mentioned, there is anti-micro. Um, this isn't a tutorial of anti-micro. If you need any further help, put a comment down on the video, uh, on this video, and I'll give you a brief rundown. But it's, you click a button, you press a button, you click a button, you press a button, you're good. Now you've got your controller set up, and now you've got ZC all set up here. There is one other thing. What if you wanted to play in full screen? What if you want this to take your whole screen. You might think, well, what if I just uh, click full screen? Like that should just magically work, right? Well, sometimes. So for most people, this might be sufficient. So let's just see. So obviously I don't really consider this full screen because look at all this, like this isn't even my full resolution. There's so much wasted space here. Now, of course, you may not want to play in full screen because it might tamper with the aspect ratio and might stretch it or squish it. You know, you may not prefer that. But if you're like me and you want to maximize your 2K monitor because you have it and you want to use it, that's where DXGL comes into play. So let's launch DXGL. I, I'm not installing it because I already have it. Uh, but basically, you just go through your standard installation. But this is what you should be greeted with at some point. There's a lot here that I do not know what it does, but I do know how to get it to work with Zelda Classic. As you can see, I have all of my Zelda Classics bound with it. The first thing you want to do is add, and then you want to choose the directory where your uh, Zelda.exe launcher is. So I'll just like click here, click here, boom. Let's add Zelda.exe. All I typically do, and I prefer this method because it lets you be really specific. You can really like tweak the size if you do custom size multiplier. Uh, I don't actually know what all these do, but I usually just check very uncommon, common, uncommon, uncommon. So like anything related to 
low resolutions and whatnot. Again, you can always mess with them, but this is just a tutorial for how to get this set up and go on immediately. I typically start by just throwing in some numbers. So let's see, let's try 1.5, 1.25. Let's just see what that looks like. So then, like I said, you should be able to just launch Zelda.exe. You shouldn't have to use the, the launcher anymore. The launcher basically just launches Zelda.exe with those configs, so. Okay, so a significant improvement. You can see it is indeed taking up, like I still have probably a good inch from where my mouse can go to the edge of my monitor, but it's significantly bigger. I can, I can utilize much more of my screen. Now I'm not gonna go all the way through with like refining this all the way, but I'll, I'll do one more adjustment. Uh, you, you guys probably get the picture. At this point, now you're like, I wanna play some quests. Let's play. So to start off with, name, set your name up. Now this is actually something I didn't realize. They changed how this works, so it's actually good that I explored this off screen because I'll be cutting it out. Loading a quest, it will set this. Before it used to just load immediately, but I guess you have to actually set it. Uh, for me, it actually didn't work with this, but let me show you what to do in, in the case where it's like me and it doesn't work. So you click browse, it should show you that information. And actually here, let me see. So you can see it's going modules, classic, Zel uh, classic first. So if I click okay, yeah, for some reason, there's something wrong going on with that. You guys might wanna fix that because I tampered with nothing. This is on first launch. But basically, if you're in the situation I'm in, just hit whatever's configured your A button. By default, it should be Alt. That should pull that up. And then press A again for custom quest. Click Browse. And if you saw before, it went Modules, Classic. And you can see right here, we got first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Uh, first, second, and third. Or first and second are original Nintendo made. Third, fourth, and fifth are all fan made, but they're made to be as though Nintendo made uh, up to five quests. So let's just load first quest. And this is what you should see, uh, just to know that you did it right, click OK, should go black for a second, there you go. Now from this point, you could hit enter to start playing the game, but here's a little bit of information here. So, creating a new file and then pressing A will give you the option to load a new custom quest. However, if you at one point save in that game, this menu will no longer be an op, this will not be an option. So if you wanna just test quests and you, for whatever reason, don't wanna make multiple files, uh, just make sure you don't save and you could just swap between them. So like right now, this is first quest. I could then choose any other quest and it will just work, but only until I save the game. So I'm gonna hit B, hit enter, AK start. And so now we're in the game. And as you can see, I'm making, like this is actually the edge of my 2K monitor. So I'm actually taking full advantage of full screen it is indeed the original Zelda, you know, everything about the original Zelda is present here. And also another thing, uh, tilde is the uncap. So F, you know, I'll go through some of this. So F1 uncaps frames. It's a keep the keyboard shortcuts. F2 shows the frames. So you can see in the lower left, I'm at 60. If I hit F1 to uncap, I hit a solid 240 because that's what I have my max FPS set on my computer. Uh, and there are a few other ones. F3, like, you're probably not going to need to know these. These are for developers mainly. But F3 is, like, uh, pausing the... Think of it as, like, pausing the emulator. F4 is, like, if you keep pressing F4, it's, like, a frame-by-frame -frame deal. So if you want to, for whatever reason, task a Zelda Classic quest, you can do it with F4, I suppose. Hit F3 to replay. Um, there you go. And I don't think I really need to show any more else here. That's the original Zelda. Now, what if you wanted to play... Yeah, you can't really see the menu, but this is restart. And as you can see, there are keyboard shortcuts for this too. If you want F6, you can F6. If you want F9 to restart, you can restart. If I save, so like F6 and game save, you'll note this menu does not, the, the ability to change the custom quest no longer appears. Now let's say you want to play a custom quest. I always just hit the Windows key to get out of that. That's the one weird thing about full screen is there no, there's no nice way out of it. Uh, hitting the Windows key for me just works. If that doesn't, you may not, you may need to just play in windowed mode, but that's up to you. That's where PureZC.net comes into play. Remember the big difference between ZeldaClassic.com and PureZC.net, ZeldaClassic.com is where you get the actual player, the engine. There are some quests you can get there, but I am here to endorse PureZC, primarily because that's where my quest is. I digress. So like, let's say we wanted to play Fun in the Sun 8-Bit Extraordinaire. You could follow this tutorial with literally any other quest. 
uh, I could even follow it with my demo. And in fact, I'll even show this in the case you want to play a demo. Click download demo. Downloads. Not that complicated. So launching this, uh, most quests will just be a QST. Some will include a readme if the, the if the creator wanted to give some, uh, some additional information. It's whatever. Uh, but all you, your QST is your, think of it as like your ISO, your .gba file for a GBA emulator. That's your actual game. So here's some important information. Where your quest file is relative to Zelda Classic, dot, the, the Zelda.exe is very important. Once you have loaded a quest and saved and you're playing it, it will follow that same path every time. So if I were to say, toss this out here or maybe a hard drive, maybe you have it connected to an external hard drive and you don't have it plugged in when you attempt to load the game, you're gonna get an error. So wherever you put your QST file, you want it to be somewhere that will never change. For me, I have a games folder, a Zelda Classic directory, and I store everything within each of the Zelda Classic, uh, relative Zelda Classic folders. Uh, if you wanna be absolutely safe, you could have a folder for Zelda Classic games and then folders for each individual Zelda Classic. It probably wouldn't be the, it might not be the smartest to put all your your quest files within the Zelda Classic directories because if you needed to update it or something happened to your Zelda Classic, uh, you don't want your quest to ta get tangled with that. There shouldn't be a problem, but if you're not as savvy with all this, you might make a mistake. So it might be best for you if you're not too savvy to just keep them separated. Plus, you know, it's nice for organization. So I have Fun in the Sun in the Fun in the Sun folder on my desktop. Let us open ZC. Register, I like to name it something that tells me what the game is, and then this automatically loads, which I actually think is really convenient. Thanks guys for doing that. Browse, and then you just go to your, your uh, directory where your quest is. So you could see I need to go back. Okay, now I'm on desktop, and then I look for Fun in the Sun 8-Bit Extraordinaire, funinthesun.qst, open that. Should show you the creator and any other information that they uh, about them, hit OK. Uh, sometimes you'll see the link icon change, sometimes not, depends on the quest. So if you hit Enter, I am now playing Fun in the Sun. Yes, and then like I said, if you don't save, if I restart, I can change this to another quest if I wanted to. Once I save, then it's set. But uh, let me demonstrate this issue uh, in the case that you're experiencing it, then you know you can confirm that that's the problem. So as you can see, I have saved. That quest file now is static within ZC. If I were to say shift this over here, you're gonna get an issue, something like cannot find this file. Now, the problem can very easily be remedied by just moving it back into wherever it was and then voila, it just works. That should be all of the basics with Zelda Classic. As you can see, I have 2.55 with a 2.50 quest, I believe it is. Yeah, and it, it, it should all work just fine. And again, if it doesn't, join the Discord. It is a very nice community, honestly, where you can get a lot of help. You, you can ping me if you need to. There, uh, there's the other developers if you need help. Leave a comment if you need any, uh, ex any additional help. I am more than willing to help anyone that wants to get into Zelda Classic because Zelda Classic is absolutely fantastic. I am very happy to have found it. But anyway, this video is already really long and you guys don't want long tutorials. I don't like long tutorials, but I hope that this helps. I finally updated my tutorial. So have fun playing Zelda Classic and the hundreds of quests that exist.